Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. This finally is the weather I ordered for an outdoor service. Absolutely beautiful day. We, it can rain as soon as we're done here, right? We, we can definitely use it. I love these services because we get to see one of the deep, deep divisions that runs through our congregation. Those who like the sun and those who like the shade. Everyone sorts themselves. It's kind of biblical, actually. Jesus came into the world to be light, and then we sort ourselves. Um, what is the Holy Spirit up to this week other than just um, gathering us together in this beautiful space? What else is the Holy Spirit up to? Oh, we got some over here. We'll start with Andrea. Hold on, the, the microphone's coming. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, last night, Brian and I went to the Ohio Light Opera and saw uh, Camelot, and it, it was wonderful. We recommend it highly. <laughs> nice. God in the arts. I love it. Thank you for sharing. A couple of things from the Good News Committee. Uh, I checked today the sign-up sheet for the cookies. We now have a commitment of eight dozen we're going to need about double that. So if you have the wish to cook or bake, uh, go ahead and sign up for us. We need about 300 cookies for the dinner on July the 10th. The other thing is we also need people. I haven't put a sign-up sheet up, but we we'll need people to come to that July 10th dinner, 12 to 2, okay. for meeting and greeting time. What? Lunch, or lunch. lunch. Okay. You know, for meeting midday and greeting, dinner, yeah. Meeting and greeting time. And third, meeting outside or meeting through the summer, make sure that you remember to drop off any of your bargains from the grocery store up in our kitchen cupboard box outside the church office. Thank you. Thank you. The Holy Spirit is gathering us together for our first Wednesday evening worship this Wednesday at 7 p.m. That came fast. So um, every Wednesday now through the beginning of August, we'll be gathering in this space um, to, to spend time in worship together. Some more camp style music um, and casual worship on a Wednesday evening. So I'm looking forward to that. 7 p.m. This week, um, there'll be popcorn uh, to to start off our summer. You bring your own Diet Coke, sorry. BYO Coke. Um, if uh, w we do have a lovely porta potty, but I also unlocked the bottom door here. And if you've never been before, the first classroom on the right has a little bathroom in it. So if you're just like, I'll skip the porta potty, I understand that door's unlocked. Uh, are there other any other nuts and bolts, Holy Spirit things happening? I'm so grateful for the volunteers who make uh, worshiping outside possible for our musicians who go the extra mile to be able to sing outside, our tech people, Paul Endres set up for us. Um, I'm very delighted and, and grateful for all those folks that make that happen because it's a little extra work to, to do that, but worth it to be in creation. I'm saving the pulpit for children's sermon. She's getting ahead of me. All right. Uh, so if there are no more Holy Spirit moments, then we'll prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the ringing of the bell. We continue with confession. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Uh, we sing, stand up, stand up for Jesus. You may stand if you want to. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So the Kyrie is, is new this week, but some of you may recognize it as service music we've done before. So we'll be doing it through the summer, so we'll get used to it.
for peace in the world, for the health of the church, for the unity of all. For His holy house, for all who worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Justice and grace, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison, on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison, every day. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and Center our lives in the water and the word. Nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie eleison on our world and on our way. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, is what it means. O oh God, you are the source of life and the ground of our being. By the power of your spirit, bring healing to this wounded world and raise us to the new life of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis 12, 1 through 9. The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in that land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. <clears throat> From there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ea on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages toward Nagab. Here ends the first reading. Please read responsively from Psalm 33, verses 1 through 12. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous. Praise is fitting for the upright. Praise, Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make, make music, music for God with a ten-stringed harp. Sing for the Lord a new song. Play your instruments skillfully with joyful sounds. For, for your, your word, O Lord, is right. 
and faithful are all your works. You love righteousness and justice. Your steadfast love fills the whole earth. By your, by your word, word were the heavens made, by the breath of your mouth, all the hosts of heaven. You gather up the waters of the ocean as in the water skin and store up the depths of the sea. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all who dwell in the world stand in awe. For God spoke and it came to pass. God commanded and it stood fast. The Lord brings the will of the nations to nothing and thwarts the designs of the people. Your will, O Lord, stands fast forever from the designs of your heart from age to age. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people chosen to be God's heritage. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you. Glory to you, Lord. My fault. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. The Christ. Please be seated, and I invite anyone up for children's time. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Keep me from being all by myself up here. We have a couple of jobs today. And the first one is to bless the new pulpit lectern that Mr. Fred made for us. Thank you, Mr. Fred. Will, will you remind me where the wood came from on the front cross? It's Brazilian walnut. It's really, really beautiful. And it's um, treated, and so we can't, like, paint it or stain it yet, but eventually, like, next year, they'll kind of match and it'll be fantastic, but I, I actually really love the look of it just like it is in that beautiful contrast. So would you put your hands on it and help me bless the, the lectern? Holy God, I give you thanks for this and for the hands that made it and for all your gifts that you gave that went into it. And Lord, I ask that you bless it for our use, that your word can be proclaimed from it, and that it can help us to grow closer to you and to each other. I pray all this in your son's holy name. Amen. Okay, so today we're doing the blessing of the wheels as well. And we have a small collection. Do you want to bring your bike over? Okay. We have a small collection of wheels for the blessing. But I think it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty, I yeah, it's an interesting collection, right? Inclusive, yeah. So um, 
Drake brought his bike. I brought Asher's rollerblades because they weren't able to be here today. And then we brought the wheelchair um, from the church that some folks use to get in and out or borrow. Um, and obviously we, we are just, we're going to bless everything with wheels that we might use this summer. So what's that? We're going to bless the cars in absentia. Unless you want to run over and put your hands on them. <laughs> uh, so our lesson for today is about Abram, who undertakes a great journey. And so I was thinking about all of the places that we go when we leave this place and all the ways that we do God's work way out in the world and the ways that the wheels that we have help us do that. So we're going to bless them today. You got your bike? I'll get these two. Okay. Dear God, we give you thanks for everything with wheels and all the brains that went into inventing them and all of the ways that we humans use them to transport us the places we need to go as assistance for mobility, as ways of recreation. And Lord, we ask that you bless all of them, but mostly bless the people who use them. Keep them safe, direct their wheels in the ways that you would have them go, and help us all to do the work that you've called us to, to say yes to your journey. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. So last week, I talked about our three-year lectionary and how there are assigned readings for every day of the year based on the seasons. And we are currently in the most boring season of the church year. There's no festivals from now. Um, what we have is called ordinary time. We're in ordinary time. And actually, we call it that not because it's boring, but because it's ordered. So it doesn't have a festival name, it has a number, an ordinal, right? So the third Sunday after Pentecost, right? All the way up until however many we get to, the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost, where we're so tired of the green that we're just, you know, we're done. I have chosen within that three-year lectionary, during their summer, there's an alternate reading, an alternate reading for the Old Testament and it traces through the story of Abram. And the way Abram is called by God, and eventually Abram's family becomes Israel, God's chosen people, all the way down to us. And so we begin that story today. But we're very, very early in, in the Bible, right? In the first book of the Bible, Genesis, so let me just back up and tell us what's happened so far, right? Beginning of Genesis, two creation stories, right? The very poetic one, in the beginning God created and then God said that it was good each day, right? And then the second one that starts with, and God molded God's earth people out of the dirt and named them Adam and Eve and put them in the garden to tend the garden. And then, right, Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the one tree they're not supposed to, get kicked out of the garden, right? And this is why we all have to work for our food and have pain in childbirth, right? And then, I, I'm, I'm really skimming here, right? And then they have kids, a couple of brothers. You want to talk sibling rivalry, right? And Cain kills Abel. And then it just goes downhill from there, right? The people cover the earth, but they're in trouble, right? To, to put it mildly, they're trouble. And so God says, I'm going to make a flood to flood the entire earth, and I'm going to start over, picks Noah, builds a boat. There's lots of rain. There's a rainbow that says, I'll never do it again. And then those people, 
people descended from Noah, saved from the flood, um, get along so well that they're like, hey, let's build a tower and climb up to see the heavens. And God is like, I knew it was trouble to put you all together. <laughs> so God makes all the people speak different languages so that they can never cooperate in large construction projects again. And that brings us to today's lesson. You didn't realize, like, there's only 11 chapters that come before Abram is introduced, and that's all that happens. Maybe a little, you know, more genealogies and things like that. It's only 11 chapters, so go home and read it. But that brings us to Abram. And this is what happens. One of those descendants of Noah, Shem, has more kids and more kids and more kids, right? Until... One of them is named Terah. And Terah brings his family, and they settle in Haran. And one of Terah's sons is named Abram. And Abram is 75 years old now. He has a wife named Sarah. You're wondering, is this the same Abraham and Sarah? It is. They just haven't had a name change yet. Names are important. Abram means venerated father, and Sarai means princess. We're going to get to the part where the names change in a couple of weeks, but in the meantime, we're going to call them Abram and Sarai. Abram and Sarai are 75, or at least he is. She's up there too, and they've never had any children. So currently, his nephew Lot is his heir, the person who will inherit the things that he's established. Now, at this point in time, since they haven't been communicating great, they haven't really created a what we might call civilization. They're nomadic. They're living in tribes. They have their tents and their things and their families, and you stay within your tribal family. But generally, you would travel to find the, you know, where the things are growing or the prey is living at the time. But you had a particular territory the places that you traveled, and the places that you settled. And so Abram was, was well settled within his family, living in his tents with his wife Sarai, figuring his nephew Lot would be his heir. Until one day God showed up and said, listen, Abram, I want you to leave everything you've ever known and follow me. I want you to leave your people and your family and your father. I don't care if you were supposed to take care of him in his old age. And I want you to go. This is before 401ks when people, like parents are expected to take care of themselves, right? Abram leaves, right? God says, I want you to come with me, and I'm going to take you to a new land and a new place, and I'm going to settle you there. Now, it's not without a promise in return, right? And it's not a small promise. God says, I will bless you. I will bless you, and I will make of you a great nation. What does that mean? Lots of children who will have more children, right? And through you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. It's not a small promise, it's a big promise, but it's a rather incredible promise to a person who has now reached 75 and still has no children. It's a promise we're going to trace. So keep, keep your eye on this promise. Three pieces, right? Blessing or presence. God says, I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be yours. Second, God says, I'm going to give you kids. Kids that have more kids that have more kids and your generations will be as many as the stars. And God says, I'm going to give you a land. A land that is your own, that belongs to you. You don't have to pick up and move anymore. This is the promise we're going to trace through God's family. Presence, 
descendants and land. Only based on that ridiculous promise, Abram says yes. Now, this man is a hero of the faith, right? But spoiler alert, the next couple of weeks, we're going to figure out why Abram's a bit of a problematic fave. He doesn't have any huge qualifications. We don't know why God chooses him. We don't get a resume. And we're going to see that he messes it up pretty badly in the trust department moving forward. Abram's one qualification? He said yes. He said yes. Right? At Bible study, we were imagining actually that maybe he wasn't even God's first choice. I mean, that's sacred imagination. It's not in the scripture at all. But I wonder about it, right? Maybe there was someone more qualified. Maybe Abram's older brother who already proved that he had children, right? And maybe God went to them and they were like, no, thank you. God, I'm really busy right now. (laughs) Got a lot on my plate, right? Or I just don't think I'm qualified. Or I've got all this parcel of kids I got to take care of and think about. Abram said yes. And then God takes care of the rest. Our gospel lesson for the day includes the calling of Matthew, another person with zero resume, right? Matthew is a tax collector, and we get nothing about him. And a tax collector was not high on the list of that people would expect a holy man, the Messiah, to choose for one of his close followers. And yet, Jesus walks by, sees Matthew sitting at his table, doing his not-so-respectable job, and says, come and follow me. Or, go, right? And what does Matthew say? Yes. Yes. He gets up and he follows. It's his one qualification to this job. I'm guessing you've kind of figured out where I'm going with this. I think often we feel like when it comes to doing God's work, we don't have many qualifications. That someone else could do it better, or we're not sure where to start, or we've got other things on our plate. God's one qualification is that we say yes. That we hear God's voice calling, go. Go to this new thing. Or come and come and follow. And we say yes. In little ways or big ways, right? And then there's promise. That God will do God's part to bring about God's kingdom in the midst of that. So go. The only qualification is a yes. To be continued, right? Because we're going to see what God does with Abram's yes next week. We're going to sing, but if you want to sit while we sing, you can sit. Camp chairs are a little harder. Picnic tables even harder with the uh, up and down, so... Sit or stand as you feel more comfortable. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. 
pass before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I'll follow him, I'll follow him. We say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray, O oh God, for the church. Unite us with any on the margins, that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. Be with our bishops, Elizabeth and Laura. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for creation. Tend forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans, and send rain to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. And teach us to care for the creation that you have given us to tend. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken in our leaders compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. Protect our troops and help us to care for our veterans well. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need. I cannot accompany anyone enduring chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, especially those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Remind us that you hold us and each of those whom we love in your healing hand. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial, racial hatred. On this week when we commemorate the Emmanuel 9, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, O oh God, for all the saints. Renew our faith so that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved dead to new life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share that peace with your neighbor. Peace be with you, Miss Sharon. Peace be with you. 
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Oh, no, not yet. Before we come to the altar, we offer thanks for all the gifts that you have given this week. We lift up the offering that you put in the offering box that somebody remembered to include to bring down because I forgot. Yes, thank you. Uh, for those who have mailed their texts or used our online giving portal to give, I am so grateful for those gifts. And also for the gifts of service, uh, again, for those who set up for our new pulpit at Lectern and for all the ways that you go, that you say yes, that you answer the call to use the gifts that God has given you in the world. I'm so grateful. Let us bless all of those gifts. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O oh God, most mighty, O oh God, most merciful, O oh God, our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table and grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abram and Sarai were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor, lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nation. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I don't know how we're going to do communion today, friends. We're, um, there's not really rows for dismissing per se. So uh, we're going to start over here and move this way. <laughs> So, you know, as you feel called, go ahead and come up and, 
and move through. And uh, so maybe we'll just have one bread and one wine and juice. My lovely assistants will handle the distribution. Bread and then wine and then baskets on the lectern. Or, or my other lovely assistants will hold the baskets on the other side for your empties. But if you would like to stay in your chair, please just wave at one of uh, Chime here, and she will come and stand next to you, and then our folks will know to, to come and serve you after. How's that sound? We'll give it a go and see how it happens. Okay, the, the bread is the same as we're using inside. It's all gluten-free. There is wine and grape juice, and the table is open, and all are welcome. So come now and eat. Who wants to do bread? One of you is going to do bread. The other one's going to do wine. That's right here. No. Nope. Um, I'll just go through the line. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sin. to the lake shore, seeking neither the wise nor the wealthy, but only asking for me to follow. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling. You call And I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. You know full well what I have for. Neither treasure nor weapons for conquest. Just these my fish nets and will for working. Sweet Lord, you have looked into my eyes, kindly smiling. You called out my name on the sand. I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other seas. You need my hands, my exhaustion, working love for the rest of the weary, a love that's willing to go on love. And I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will 
seek other seeds. You who have fished other waters, you the longing of souls that are yearning, O loving friend, you have come to call. Call out my name on the sand. I have abandoned my small boat. Now with you, I will seek other I knew y'all would figure that out better than if I actually tried to come up with some direction. Now, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May God's grace and understanding be with you all your days. Be with you finish by special request with I'll fly away and you uh, may stand if you'd like to feel like standing for this one Life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, Shadows of this life and brown, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never 
to carry a couple of chairs there's a little bit of tear down if you're if you're up for it go in peace love and serve the lord thanks be to god <laughs> 